hello, 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 everyone. Welcome back, welcome back to my channel, the Show Hubby Show. So, uh, yes, I'm in the kitchen today. I got me some fried chicken going on. Some fried chicken, some spinach, and some mashed potatoes. So, got some fried, good old fried chicken. I watch it because sometimes it's, um, you know, in a tank in the deposit, but it's almost ready. Almost ready. So, sometimes. Good old fried chicken. Uh -huh. This is gonna be delicious. Oh, it's nice. Real fried chicken. It's browner real good. Uh -huh. Well, and then I have some, uh, that's a uh, spinach. So, and then I do have some, uh, some uh, mashed potatoes. Mash the table. So and let that cook. And also, while that's cooking, I want to whip up a little a cake. I want to whip up a cake. And uh, so, and you know, put some icing on it. Put some icing on it. This is my uh, icing I want to put on it. And so then, what I want to do is, you know, make half of it uh, cupcakes. And then uh, the, other the other half will go in my pan. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to wash my hands. So, so what I do, wash my hands first before I get down into the, you know, into the cake. So, spraying that all uh, between my, you know, my thumbs, my thumbs. Count to 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 17. Get my fingernails. It's nice and 20. Sometimes I do it longer than that because I have to put it under the water too. So, you know, in between, you know, hanging. Mess it off. So then what I'll do, I'll have this uh super moist, uh super moist uh Betty Crocker. You know, sometimes I do my little homemade cakes, but you know, and then I think I have a video of me. I did some homemade cakes. I did some homemade cupcakes and homemade uh, cake. I use a uh, whole flour. But this time, I'm going to use this because I like this too. But I, will, I add my own egg. And uh, I'm putting the chicken down. I had my own eggs and, you know, add a little bit of water. So just uh, open it up like this. And I use my little bowl right here. Put it on in the bowl. Put it on in the bowl. Put it all in the bowl. So sometimes you need an apron because you can't get it on your stove. So 
So. Start in a bowl like this. So what I do, I get I add uh you know one, two, three eggs. That's one. my hands what I do I take a little bit of a uh, you know margarine just take a little bit of margarine and make sure I you know so have that like that and then I take uh you know take a little bit And put a little margarine in here. And also what I what I do. Mm -hmm. Uh let me see. Potatoes, chicken, and spinach. 
spinach, good old, you always got to have your, you know, to have your greens, so what I do, uh, let me, uh, let's put a little, or oh, I put a little margarine down in the little, in the little holder so the cupcake won't stick. That's a good idea. Some, uh, oh, the cupcake won't stick. No, I want to, uh, well, I put a little margarine down in the little cupcake holder so they won't stick. So, the, you know, the cupcake won't stick when I put it, but, you know, so. down in there and you know so this might just be enough for the cupcakes I might have to uh Open another box of cake mix, you know. I had to open another box of cake mix for the other pan. Seems like this is going to take it all, but I might have enough. That filled them up, so no one of two. Last time I made them a little too, uh, put too much in. I believe last time and they was, you know, overfilled. But I think all you need to really do is probably put them halfway. So I put three eggs in here, some water, stir, stir up the batter, and let's put them in the oven. See how they're going to turn up. Oven nice and hot, so put them all in. And then I have a little bit left. I have a little bit left, so what I'll do, put that in this pan here. So, I'll put that in there. And, so, chicken is done. And it's called rich and creamy frosting cream cheese. Oh, that's gonna be nice. Mm -hmm. Cream cheese. Yep. 
My husband always loves cream cheese, so let's try this and see what it's gonna taste like. So I got the cupcakes in the oven, cake in the oven, and when that finished, chicken is already ready. We know this. We know the spinach and the mashed potatoes. So that is served and dessert at the same time. So. Chicken, she's done. Yeah, very nice. Well, it's got a brown a little bit on the other side, and she'll be ready. Mm -hmm. So, let me mash potatoes cook. And this is, uh, so this is what the spinach looks like. So, I like to cook my spinach, you know, so you can smoke a little spinach. So, um, Let it cook down. I let it cook down a little bit more. Sometimes what I do, I put, you know, sour cream on them. But, you know, usually, most of the time I just cook it with, uh, you know, a um, little margarine, salt and pepper. And, you know, nobody here but me and my son. So, I usually like sour cream on mine. But he may, he, he is plain with just margarine. A little bit, just a little bit margarine. Like probably one eighth, one eighth of a stick. A little small portion, put it in there, let that boil on down. Let the water boil first. Put the salt and pepper in there, put that one eighth uh, piece of margarine in there, let it, let it boil, then put your spinach in there. And uh, so, spinach I usually use in a bag. Uh, you get the rice in the dry, and I buy these by the time I buy about. I need to buy about six or seven bags when I shop there. I'm making some mixed vegetables and some broccoli and also get some fresh greens. So, coming from the earth. They say it's good to put things in our body that come from the earth. Mm -hmm. So, plenty green vegetables. in our body that comes from the and sometimes uh see on my phone i you know i don't know if you can see that or not but this is my youtube channel this is my youtube channel yeah my youtube channel i i have it on my tv in the living room i have it on my um um you know, my, my phone. Talk about Joe Osteen. Yeah, so this is my YouTube channel. But, we turn it down a little bit. So, what I want to do is... Uh, You know, since the chicken is on low, that's cooking low. Actually, I can turn the chicken on. All right, I'm let the potatoes cook. I'm gonna ice them. The cake when they get done. So what I want to do, probably just read a little bit. You know, out the book. Waiting on the mashed potatoes to get done. And yeah, why not read a little bit? Okay. Let's see. This is the same book I read out before. This is my business law book. You know, business law. And, um, with UCC application. So, let's see if I can find something in here that's interesting. Okay, let's, uh... Uh, let me see. Let me see if I can find something interesting. Let's let's talk about uh, types of bankruptcy uh, procedures. So let me read up on that a little bit. I don't know 
don't know if you can see that in that, but um, let's read up on this bankruptcy procedures. Okay, let's start from chapter seven. Uh, chapter seven, ordinary bankruptcy. Everyone is eligible except banks, railroads, and insurance companies. Uh, uh, filing can be voluntary or involuntary. I say, who can file? Everyone. Everyone is eligible. When? When used. Who's going to use when debt? Use when debt or wants to discharge most debt and begin with a clean slate. So in other words, you want to you want to begin with a clean slate. So use when debt or wants. In other words, you're in debt and you want a clean slate. You file Chapter Seven. Chapter Seven bankruptcy. Special features. Debtors proper. Pro property, no, debtor's property is liquidated. Some property is exempt. Some debts cannot be discharged. That's chapter 7. That's ordinary bankruptcy. Let's go with chapter 11, reorganization. My husband, he always, he knew a lot about these different chapters and all. I never kept, you know, kept up with them, but these are in my business law book. Chapter 11, reorganization. Individuals, partnerships, and corporations can file. Railroads can file only, only commodity uh, brokers and stock brokers cannot file, can be voluntary or involuntary. So individuals can file for Chapter 11 reorganization. They say, oh, when, when can you file? When you're in debt. Well, usually a business wants to continue operating but needs to reorganize and liquidate debts. So if a business is, yeah, I guess if they are in debt and they want to reorganize, then they can, you know, they say if they want to reorganize, and liquidate debts. In other words, sell off, I guess, sell off their uh, items, their property, and liquidate their debt. You know, and then once they sell, they can pay off their debt. And that's, I guess, that's like reorganization. So they're reorganizing. So debtor in possession feature um, debtor files plan within 120 days. Plan must be fair, equitable. And feasible creditors can also file plans. Confirmation needed. So reorganization. You want to reorganize. You're in debt. You know. It says use when debt, debt, or usually a business wants to continue operating, but needs to reorganize and liquidate debts. We want to reorganize. Uh, then we have Chapter 12, Family Farmer Debt Adjustment. Family farmers can file, including partnerships and corporations, uh, debt ceiling of $1.5 million. So, uh, Chapter 12, Family Farmer Debt Adjustment. So, I guess farmers, if they want to adjust, they want to uh, adjust their debt, they can file, including partnerships can file, and corporations, and the debt ceiling is $1.5 million. And they say, when used. So in other words, say who can file, when used, and special features. So when used, use when debt or debt or I guess it say debt. Did it say debt slash or? So I guess it say use when debt or is a family farmer who needs a debt adjustment plan to keep the farm running. So he needs a debt adjustment plan to keep the farm running. I guess he's in debt and he wants to um, file Chapter 12. So he want to keep on, keep his business going, keep his farming industry, his farming business going, so he can file Chapter 12. Now he doesn't say debt, debt tour, in possession, feature, debt, debt or files plan within 90 days. Plan lasts three years with two year possible extension. Extension plan must be confirmed. And then we have Chapter 11, uh, individual debt adjustment. Individuals only. So chapter 13, only individuals can file, not corporations. They say individuals only, no corporation or partnerships, no involuntary filings allow debt ceiling of 450000 And then it says, uh, use when an individual debtor, debtor with a steady income voluntarily decides to adopt a debt adjustment plan. So chapter 11, debt adjustment. So in other words, you in debt. And it's only for individuals. You're in debt, you want to file Chapter 13. So no corporations and no partnerships can file Chapter 13. 
Uh, and it said only the death to, only the debtor can file a plan. Can file a plan. Payments must start 30 days after plan submitted. A few debts cannot be discharged. Uh, plan lasts three three years with two year possible extension. Well, that's something you know to keep up with. Uh, chapter 11. Uh, chapter 11, chapter 7, 11, 12, and 13. Um, and then it goes down over here and says, unlike chapter 11, debtor, debtor who has a 120-day deadline to devise a reorganization plan, the chapter 12 farm debtor is limited to 90 days. The clock starts running toward that 90-day deadline when the order for relief is granted. Debtors, however, can file for an extension. So let's see what else that is interesting in this little book. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's talk about the employment relationship. An employment relationship may be formed in many ways. Uh, it may result from a simple oral agreement between two individuals, or it may be created from a detailed written contract that's, that is finalized after complex, complex negotiations uh, between a union and a corporation. In the United States, the dominant legal doctrine governing most employment relationships is employment at will. Uh, many states, however, have come to the conclusion that employment at will must be changed in order to ensure justice for employees. For this reason, the at will doctrine has been modified by the addition of several wrongful discharge exceptions. Uh, employment at will. And as noted, most jurisdictions in the United States still follow the doctrine of employment at will, which means that an employer can dismiss an employee at any time for any reason. So they can do, you know, where you get a job right here, in Washington, D.C., or wherever, they can, you know, they can discharge you for. Any reason. They discharge you for any reason. It says, which means that an employer can dismiss an employee at any time for any reason. And you know, that's crazy. Any time for any reason, but if it's an unjust reason. Under this doctrine, the employer does not even have to give a reason for the firing. The rationale for the employment at will doctrine is that both the employer and the employee should be free to terminate the employment relationship at any time. Uh, this principle allows both parties to end an unsatisfactory relationship or to take advantage of new opportunities. Unfortunately, the principle can be easily abused by unscrupulous employers. That's what I'm talking about. See what I say? Unfortunately, see they know they can do that, so they take advantage and they fire people just to be firing somebody. Sometimes they might not even like you. And they might just, you know, because they know they can do it, they're going to do it. It says, unfortunately, the principle can be easily abused by unscrupulous employers. They let people go just to be letting people go. I mean, you come in late a couple times, and that ain't all that. Then they ready to let you go. Um, collective bargaining agreements. An early victory over employment at will was won by organized labor as a result of some Hard fought battles during the 1930s and 1940s, employees who belong to labor unions today are frequently protected by hiring and firing procedures that have been written into their collective bargaining agreements. So, in other words, you got a collective bargaining agreement. Agreement. Probably, I guess, uh, you know, you in the, um, you in the, uh, you have a, um, you know, you in a union. You know, your job, you join a union. A union, the union, a lot of times can help you. Let's say unjustly, uh, you know, you unjustly fired, and you in the you in the union, your job about you know you join the union. Uh, trying to spin it down a little bit, so let's go with this one here: professional employment contract. Individuals with unique abilities, special talents, or highly specialized education often have the power to negotiate their own employment contracts. Such individuals who, I mean, would not be affected by employment at will. So individuals with unique abilities, 
special talents or a highly specialized education often has the power to negotiate their own employment contracts. In general, such people are in demand and can thus be selective in the choice of employers. Uh, professional athletes, established scientists, top business executives, uh, famous entertainers, and well-known artists and writers will belong in this category. The terms of an individually uh, negotiated professional employment contract can be expressed or implied. Although the uh, parties are free to agree to any reasonable terms, they wish such agreements generally include provisions designing the duration, uh, employment title, responsibilities, hour and or base salary and benefits. Employers may also uh, ask such employees to include a restrictive employment uh, covenant as part of the contract. Wrongful discharge. So I was questioning that when I saw, you know, when I read the first part, when it said, you know, the employment at will, the employment at will, and they saying that a lot of employers use that to their advantage, just let people go, just to be letting people go. You know, people have to feed their families and pay their bills and they let people go. So, but, uh, and then this one is a wrongful discharge. Despite the prevalence of labor unions in the country, most employees are not union members. That's what I was saying. If you're in a union, they will help you with your job. Uh, all, all, also, most workers are not in a position to dictate the terms of their own employment contracts. Um, as a result, most workers are subject to the doctrine of employment at will and can therefore be dismissed at any time for any reason or for no reason. Yep, they don't have to even tell you why they're frying you. They can just let you go. Well, my mashed potatoes still cooking. Chicken is ready. And my spinach, I just turned that down. I'm just waiting on. Uh, ooh, wow, yes. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, wow, cupcakes. Oh, they are ready already. I can turn the oven down. Turn it over there a little bit because they're about ready to come out. Uh, okay, wrongful discharge gives employers legal grounds for a lawsuit against employers. No, it gives employees uh, legal grounds for a lawsuit against employers who have dismissed them unfairly. Uh, the courts have established three standards by which to judge the injustice of a dismissal. Public policy, implied contract, and implied covenant. So wrongful discharge, it gives employees legal grounds for a lawsuit against employers who have uh, dismissed them unfairly. Public policy, an employee who can prove that his or her discharge somehow violated public policy may recover damages and tort. Upholding public policy is a broad legal principle that says that the courts will not allow anyone to do anything that tends to injure the public at large. Uh, and then implied contract. An implied contract involves an employment relationship that would have been considered a will under normal circumstances had the employer or an agent of the employer uh, not said or done something that implied otherwise. Some courts base the implied contract accepting exception to employment at will on the doctrine of promissory estoppel. Promissory estoppel involves four elements. Uh, the employer makes a promise that the employer can reasonably expect the employee to reply upon. The employee really relies on their promise and as a result does something or re refrains from doing something, the employee would not have acted or refrained from acting if the employer had not made the promise. So in other words, if the employee is if the promissory estoppel, if the employer, if the employer, um, if the employee in other words, if the employer made a promise and the employee relied upon that promise and he did, he refrained from doing something or he did something according to the promise, then the employee, the employer can be liable. So that's what it's saying. See, promissory estoppel involves uh, four elements. So in other words, it says um, a promise that the employer can reasonably expect the employee to rely, rely upon. It says the employee really relies on their promise. So the employee relies on their promise. 
that the employer gave promissory estoppel, so they have uh, employee would have recourse. Under these circumstances, the employer cannot deny the promise made to the employee, and the doctrine of employment at will is in inapplicable. Applicable. And then it has uh, and the last one is implied covenant. Covenant. Implied covenant holds that there is an implied promise in any employment uh, relationship that the employer and the employee will be fair and honest with one another. Employer and employee will be honest with one another. Uh, this provision means that neither party will unfairly or dishonestly cheat the other out of anything due to the other party because of the employment relationship. So in other words, just because they have an employment relationship, you know, the employer and the employee, you have an employment relationship. You can't, you know, one and one one can't cheat the other. So that's what they call the implied covenant. Implied covenant. So let me uh some other some lot of other terms in here we have uh we have the Norris LaGuardia Act, uh, we have the Wagner Act, uh, Norris, Norris LaGuardia Act, after the passage of the Railway uh, Labor Act, Congress passed four other major labor acts. Uh, the Norris LaGuardia Act was passed by Congress in 1932. Among its major provisions was the outlawing of yellow dog contracts. Ooh, I never heard of that. Well, you know, I, I guess I went over this when I was taking my classes, but it's been a long time. Yellow dog contracts, which forbid the joining of a union as a condition of employment. Forbid the joining of a union as a condition of employment. It also specified that striking, striking, picketing, and boycotting were not subject to federal court injunctions. A boycott is a con concerted refusal refusal to have dealings with someone to force acceptance of certain conditions, while the statute restricting the use of injunctions, injunctions in labor disputes, it did not pro prohibit them entirely. Okay, I'm going to stop right here for a minute. Let me... Let me... Uh, let me see. Let me take the... I want to take these cupcakes out. Let me see how they turned out. Ah, oh, yeah, she's ready. Move over there a little bit. Oh, they looking good. And I'm going to cut that off. Cake turned out. See how it sprung back from the pan. Let her cool before icing it. Set it right there. So, so they ready. Let them cool while I finish reading a little bit more, and then. Let it cool while I finish reading a little bit more, then I'll show you how they look when I icing them. Okay, uh, we have uh, the Clayton Act, 1914, exempted union activity from the antitrust laws, Railroad Labor Act, uh, 1926, provided for supervision of collective bargaining for railroads and airlines established. The National Mediation Board to conduct union elections, mediate, uh, mediate employer union disputes. So then we have the Norris LaGuardia Act, outlaw yellow dog contracts, limited the power of federal courts to issue injunctions to halt labor disputes, guaranteed employees the right to organize into unions and to engage in collective bargaining. And that was the La La Norris LaGuardia Act. The Norris LaGuardia Act guaranteed employees the right to organize into unions and to engage in collective bargaining. Uh, Wagner Act, 
uh, created the National Labor Relations Board, authorized NLRB to conduct representative elections and to determine the bargaining unit. Uh, we have the Taft Hartley Act. I remember this one. Uh, the Taft Hartley Act um, outlawed certain practices of unions as unfair labor practices, allowed states to legislate right to work laws, provided an 80 day cooling off period and strikes that endanger national health or safety. Uh, created a mediation and cons con conciliation service to assist in the settlement of labor disputes. Uh, Landrum Griffin Landrum Griffin Act uh, established a bill of rights for union members. Uh, required unions to adopt constitutions and bylaws. Required unions to submit annual reports detailing uh, uh, detailing assets, liabilities, payments, and loans. Added further provisions to the list provisions to the list of unfair labor practices. Uh, so let's see what else we have here. Uh, um, a lot of good stuff in this book, this law book, but um, I'm not going to read too much more out of here. Let me see. What we have up here in the front. Um, I think that's all I'm going to read for right now. I want to ice in these cupcakes in this cake because time is rolling on. Uh, that's just, you know, my business law book. So I'm going to. Uh, so we have uh, that cake right there. So what I want to do is I just have to let it cool. But I can take it out the pan. was just part of the cake that was left because most of it went into, you know, the cupcakes. So, I can cool a little bit more. And then we have the cupcakes. The cupcakes come up. You know, the cupcakes. So it would be good if I had uh, different color icing, you know. I mean, you know, different kind, different flavor icing. I would do, you know, the pink icing, the white icing. I'll tell you one of the cupcakes with the chicken. And then also I have, uh, I have a little bit of this, there's a little sprinkles. So what I do is, let me see. Cream cheese icing. So you take my, you take your, you know, cupcakes, and and sometimes see this is a little hot, so I'm just putting it on there. 
But I'm going to let the rest of them cool. Mm-hmm. Let the rest of them cool. And, um, yeah. I can show it about my mouth so I can... These are a little, uh... See when you are. Uh, and um, it's still a little hot, so it's not, you know, but I don't want to tell you what it tastes like. Mm hmm. Mm. Oh. Mm hmm. Mm. I want to see what it tastes like. It's so good. But I want to say thanks for joining me today. Um, I'm sure I'll have a show. I see I cooked my chicken. I got my potatoes and potatoes. Dinner's just about ready. And I'll put these cupcakes in the fridge where they can cool off. But these are so good. And see, I put a little sprinkles on the top. And, um, uh, mm-hmm. Done. Mm-hmm. And. From the drink. Oh. Mm, mm, mm. Good. And this I have my um this is my coconut milk drink. Coconut milk drink. So, you know, coconut milk drink. So just a little bit and mm -hmm. Coconut milk drink. But let me finish my uh, icing. I mean, my cupcakes. Oh, they're so delicious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. And that real sweet. But it's just the icing. And so, you know. So. The cupcakes are not real sweet. That's what I like about them, you know. So, I have the cake. I'm icing that. And then I have the, uh, Back to the cupcake. Oh, these are good. These are delicious. Mm -hmm. But, you know. Mm. So, you all have a good one. And uh, no, Trump, Trump was speaking today. Uh, declared, declared a national emergency, so we're trying to fight this coronavirus. So the president and government trying to fight this, you know, putting on all the stops, doing what we got to do. They're doing what they have to do. And um, so I was watching the news before I came on. I did my video. But these are my cupcakes and my icing them. And that cake right there. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. mm. Yep. So. Icing all of them like this. Put them all around. Mm. 
put them in the refrigerator where they can get cold. Or coldness on them. Put them in the fridge where they can get cold. Mm-hmm. Put them in the fridge where they can get cold. See? And So, icing them on up, and icing them on up, and just like, you know, little cupcakes. That's a nice big one. Uh-huh. So, put them in there, refrigerator, let them get a little coldness on them. I'm afraid that would be a little coldness. And this is the other part of the cake. I want to say thanks for joining me today for icing up this, you know, these good old cupcakes and this cake. So what I could have did was, at the same time, so this is the second part, delicious, and so delicious cake, there we go, there you have it. All these in the fridge and let them get cold. Mm -hmm. So, yep, so, mm hmm. So good. I'm going to ice it on the side of my mouth. So, this was just one. Uh, this was the other cake mix that was left over. So, I said, you know, just. And um, mm -hmm. so there you have it, little delicious cake. I'm gonna put it in the uh, refrigerator, let it get cold, and um, yep, put it in the fridge, let it get cold, and um, so there you have it, delicious cake. And this is a uh, cream cheese icing, cream cheese icing.
Yep, so R. So I want to say thanks for joining me. I want to say thanks for joining me. Uh, thanks for joining me today. And um, uh, this is a piece of chicken. Uh, thanks for joining me today. And uh, mm -hmm. this is chicken. Oh, uh, good. And I hope you see it back here again. Fried chicken, delicious. Mm hmm. Um, hope to see you back here again. Same place, same time, same channel. This is uh, the Cheryl Hubbard Show. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Chicken. Um, So, I'm gonna sit back, go on here to the news, and got my cup right through my cake. Put the cake to the side in the fridge. So, I don't know, I might share some with my neighbors, you know. I'm not gonna eat all the cake. I'm gonna say thank you for joining me again. Hope to see you back here again. Same place, same channel. I'm gonna see you on the show. And I'm going to enjoy this good old fried chicken. Mm-hmm. Mm. 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 Enjoy this good old fried chicken. I want to say thanks for joining me today. And I want to see you right here. In my next video. Mm -hmm. yep, so, uh, you are really pour that in there, the rest of that in there. And I'm going to say thank you for joining me today. Uh, let's see. I got two more minutes. But well, I want to see you back here again the same time, same place, same channel. Um, uh, we'll see you on the show. And, um, so I'm just ready to do it. We are my little book today. Uh, I'll cut the spinach off because that's ready. Good old spinach, that's done. And, um, So, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna see you back here again, same place, same time, same channel. Man, me another piece of chicken, you know. And um, thanks for joining me. And we'll see the same person in class on the channel. I like chicken wings better than I do like um than I like the you know chicken legs. These are good. Just put a little seasoning on them. Or the pan get hot first. Mm -hmm. All right, the pan hot. Put the pan get hot. And I fry mine in margarine, not grease. Well, sometimes I fry it in Crisco. So you can fry it in margarine. That's why it comes out browner, like um, like it's grilled. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Margarine, put a little chicken seasoning on it, and the pan hat. Clean the chicken off real good. So, um, 
And then shake it off real good. Put a little seasoning down in the flour. And put a little seasoning down in the flour and then dip the chicken oil down in it. And now you can put it in the pan. It's already, it's already hot. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to thank you for joining me today. Hope we'll see you back here again. Same place, same time, same channel. Just show how it goes. I'm going to get down on some more of this chicken. I'm just going to finish this. I don't need no more. I got to fix my son's plate. And, um, I got mashed potatoes, my fried chicken, my spinach, and then uh, I'm gonna put my cakes and stuff in the fridge so they can cool off. Um, put my cakes and stuff in the fridge. All right, that's it. Uh, yep, my cupcakes. Do my little cupcakes and then put them in the fridge so they can, you know, cool off so the icing can be hard. The icing can be hard. But I want to say thank you for joining me today. Hope to see you back here again. So, subscribe to my channel, comment below. I want to say thanks for joining me, for Cheryl Hubbard Show, and I'll see you on my next video. And I'm going to get down on the rest of this chicken, put the spoon away, and get ready to watch some more news and see what's going on. So, you all have a good one. And look, I'm eating so fast, so much, I got icing, icing on my um, lips and stuff, so you all have a good one.